Yeah. And our mission is 100 happy, healthy. I love that. Right? We want people to be 100 years old, but happy and healthy when they get there. I love that. Welcome to the Dr. JJ Thomas Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dr. JJ Thomas Podcast. I'm JJ Thomas, and I'm here today with my very good friend and colleague, Doug Adams. Doug, uh, Doug and I have been long, long friends, and um, so it's really a pleasure to have him here today. And um, I'll give you a short intro of Doug from my personal perspective in the sense that the reason we've been friends so long is that um, we used to work together a long time ago in insurance-based practice. And um, when we worked together, there was almost an immediate friendship because our, our passion for what we do and our passion for um, excellence and high standards in giving the best care for our patients was like immediate, immediate to me, immediately obvious in the way Doug lives, the way he learns, the way he practices everything, the way he communicates with patients and with colleagues. So um, his, his resume is very long, but in a nutshell, the reason Doug is so amazing is because of all of those things. So we're very lucky to have him and talk about all the cool things he does in his practice. And, um, and I think you'll learn a lot from him today. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you for having me. I, it's funny you say that because I remember when I first started working in the clinic with you, I just switched over and you and I played this game of like, we had to have met before. Yeah. Like there's no way, like we probably didn't. I know. But we were like, we just hit it also. We were like, no, we've met before. Definitely. Like, I'm sure we've met at some point there. But I know. Yeah. It was, it was like this, we, we knew each other because we're so similar in so many ways, I think. And we just had the same appreciation for really excellence, like- yeah, and I appreciate yeah. JJ has been such a big influence on my career and, and the pursuit of that excellence and, and just like surrounding yourself with people of like mind is is so important and to have colleagues like JJ that I was so fortunate for. We had that little like all-star crew there that was really fun and yeah. just uh, we branched out, but it's it's been a lot of fun. But I think that's, I was thinking about this today because actually right before this, I did a, I did a solo podcast on like people were asking about um, what dry needling course to mm-hmm. use. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, I've taught with so many profess, so many great clinicians and now yeah. we've all kind of branched out to other places. But I think that's what happens. Like you work with great clinicians and you learn from each other and you grow and you build each other up. But then as you each start to diverge off, you're like, you're still, con- you're still pursuing excellence, but maybe in a slightly different track, but with the same. Yeah. So I feel like that's what our whole crew did. Yeah. We have, right? we all have a similar foundation, mm-hmm. but then it was like, okay, I'm going to go in this running pathway yeah. and all right, I'm going to go in the dry needling pathway. I'm going to go here. And uh, yeah. there's so much to learn because at the foundation is still like, we really are, yeah. are pride ourselves on getting great results with patients and the quality of care that we're delivering, which is fun. Totally. And that's actually back to that. So that's one of the, one of the main things I wanted to ask you today is like, can you, for the audience, um, go through how you ended up, because Doug has a lot of experience in a lot of areas. Like Doug is sort of similar. I'm like the dry needling girl now, but like I have a lot of experience in a lot of areas, but Doug, and Doug's the running guy. Right. And I'm always like, and I do refer to you that way. I'm like my friend, the running gate specialist. He's, you know, but, um, but you have a lot of experience, you know, you did a lot of research Mm -hmm. in ACL. You did a lot of research in, I think gate and maybe East M too. Did I make that up? Swimmer shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of research. So what am I, I'm curious for the, for the audience to hear what led you on the path of focusing so much on the running gate analysis. Do you remember? The running, yes. I, I, like a lot of people's background story in the field, I had experiences growing up of running injuries. Mm-hmm. I was doing cross country in high school and got stress fractures in both shins. Mm. Kind of a stupid injury. I jumped off a log. We were we used to go run in a place where the there was like a equine, like a horse trail, and it yeah. was really fun. And we were stupid freshmen yeah. jumping off of and while I, you were training, like yeah. running. Oh, oh yeah. my god! Doing lots of cross high country running. Yes. Oh, oh my yeah. god! But so I had these injuries and um, got to meet a lot of physical therapists then, and I really started enjoying. It, learning about running. And then I remember I started competing in triathlons as a, between my sophomore and junior year of high school. Mm. 
And I really got into it, and I picked up a book called Triathlete's Training Bible. Okay. And that was it for me. Was I, it good? It was great. Yes. Oh, it's it's still a great resource. I still send people to that. Triathlete's Training Triathlete's Bible. Triathlete's Training okay. Bible. And I just started reading about it, and I had this senior project in high school that you had to do a publication, and I was, I'm a math and science guy. English was not my favorite, but I asked the teacher, can I do this sports science magazine or journal basically and cool. i worked with john noonan a lot of those guys oh. i started like doing this testing and he helped me with my senior project and did this and that was just the start of me really go like really being involved with running and triathlon but then i i there's no story complete without this saying that i had just the best mentorship along the way yeah even in college, I had great professors. When I went to PT school, I had just the top researchers in right. the field that I was very lucky to have Irene Davis, Rich Willie, Lynn Steiner Mackler, yeah. all of them right there teaching me about gait and ACL and just being a lackey for that. And numbers. Because I have to say, one of the things that I really admire about you is that you are so good at looking at research and 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 not just looking at research, but like dissecting it. Like, I just love the way you, you, Doug doesn't just read research. Like you read it and you dissect it and then you, and you also pull from many different areas and you just, you really are a student of the research, which I love. Okay. Yeah. I, it's, I'm smart enough to understand the research, but dumb enough that I need to make it approachable. <laughs> so I take <laughs> I it and I'm like, I, I have to figure out like, well, what is this? Like, yeah. okay, big words. How yeah. do I take this? How do I make this? Turn it into practice. Yeah. Usable. Yes. Exactly. I totally, yeah. I'm very functional. You are. In everything that I do. It's huge. And like research, I think, is the same way. And why I was really lucky to have, like Rich really and Irene Davis are both these running researchers that really focused on the function. Like, yeah. What do we do? And they were looking for the same answers. Like, exactly. what does this tell? Like, because I think it is true that a lot of times, sometimes in research, they get caught up in like the details of the research, but that yes. doesn't always help the clinicians so directly. Exactly. Yeah. So I do. I agree with that. And I think you, it's a, it's a tribute to them and your relationship with them, but you definitely took it and, and hit the ground running with it. So yeah, that's nice really cool. Yeah. That. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> you just came to me on the fly. But I, you know, about research too, like one of the things I think that's important to remember is a lot of people get stuck in evidence-based practice and yeah. they don't understand that uh, this is the way I put it about research. No research study ever started without an expert coming up with an idea. Yeah. So when you're working with experts, when you're getting mentorship, that's a level of evidence. Totally. And I think people need to understand, and this even alludes to a point that I, we might talk about later here too, but no expert ever, no no one ever did a research study without some type of expert saying, I think this would be a really good idea. Yeah. We need to validate this. We need to see if this works. I'm so glad you said that because one of the things I was thinking about when you were talking about um, what first got you interested in running, that whole process of like you being a runner in high school and then yeah. asking to do this project, all I kept thinking, and I didn't want to interrupt you, but I kept thinking like, it's really, I think part of what drives you to be so excellent is your curiosity and to follow up on what you're just saying, like a, a great research ex experiment or a great research, research design is only going to come from someone being curious and from a clinician more. Yeah. like actively participating in something and being like, well, let me ask why this is doing this or why this isn't doing this. Exactly. So Yeah. And I think that that is the biggest determinant when I'm interviewing somebody, yeah. I'm checking to see like how much are they interviewing me? Yeah. To think like, Smart. what's their curiosity? You mean to hire? To hire. Yeah. I love yes. that. Yes. Like when I'm like a, for one a clinician right. in my clinic or for an employee at my company, I like, I really want to see how curious they are. Yeah. And I I call that hunger. Yeah. Like I'm looking for a hungry clinician. Right. What, right? what yeah, they want to understand why, and that's going to be an itch that they just need to scratch all the time, all the time. Yeah. They need to figure out, they need it. to understand like, why did that help this person and not that person? Yeah. And if they're asking that, they're going to keep getting that's right. better. And that curiosity is, is a huge part of that too. That's so cool. Cause it's you, well, curiosity and enough courage to not 
care if people think you don't know something. Amen to that. Yes. Or they disagree with you. Yes. Like, which I think is important to yeah. be able to take that. You right. Know? I, it's like, it's a, it's along the same lines of failure is good type yeah. thing. I even asked like my kids yesterday. I was like, hey, what'd you fail at this week? I love that. And, and they were like, what? And my daughter, the <laughs> type like, a, a test? she's like, I, I don't like that word fail. And yeah. I was like, embrace it because yeah. it's okay. And like, we can't have big failures, right? We're not going right. to, we don't want to seriously injure a patient. Right. But we want to be able to say like, oh, wow, that I had a patient I was just working with the other day and I like... Got them great results. They were, like came in for some back pain, started working on them, did some things that made a big difference. And then I was like, oh, let me check this one thing out. And I did it, and it undid all the work that I did. Oh, man. Yeah, right? But you learned a lot. But I learned a lot. 100%. And then the next time that they came in, it was like, okay, we need to address this, and we need to understand. And I had to ask myself, like, why did yeah. that? Like, was that because I took away their compensation? And, okay, well, now what, are they, what were they compensating for? Yeah. And why was that doing that? So you, you can't be afraid to be wrong wrong yeah with that and be curious about why you're wrong okay so i have to ask you this now because yeah. i didn't i should have said this earlier but in the introduction but i was so excited to just introduce who you are as a human but um for those of you that don't know doug he, he can you talk a little bit about your project like d the different components doug because of his curiosity he has a lot of uh, sort of different elements of what he does as a clinician and as an educator um and yeah, let's talk about those a little bit. Yeah, so maybe um, <clears throat> maybe I'll give a little background story. That sounds quickly. good. Yeah. So uh, you heard the high school part. Then I went to uh, undergrad at Auburn and continued, and really was interested in exercise science stuff. Went to PT school. Had this great mentorship. Started doing. We would have these. Uh, gait analysis that people would come in for, started doing that, started helping with some research too. Mm -hmm. And we started noticing patterns. Mm -hmm. And that was where we started to say, maybe there's not a perfect way to run, mm -hmm. but there's definitely some imperfect ways to run yeah. that we know could <laughs> cause be, exactly. cumulative damage. Yes. Yeah. So we should identify what those are. And so I started teaching with that. I got out of academia after a while, did some publications, worked there, went into more of a private practice setting and got frustrated pretty quick Yeah. because I thought like, oh, I love running. Like I should just work with runners all the time. Right. That's not the case as a young professional. Yeah. Right? And it was great experience. And I loved that I could get a lot of reps. Yeah. And I think that is valuable. Totally. You're, you can't always just start what you think you're going to finish in your niche practice. Right. Um, but I got frustrated pretty quick. So I refined some of those things that I saw when I was in academia. I started refining it and try, and then came up with these like five categories and started to say, all right, well, that's gait analysis, but what else do I need to look at? Yeah. So then started teaching these courses. I was in charge of onboarding for a pretty big company, um, doing a lot there. And we were supposed to teach like 30 people and we wound up teaching 200 people in wow. one year. Yeah. And I went off these, on these tangents about running. Like yeah. Four hour tangents. Love it. It was, it was great. Couldn't stop you. you know? So then eventually this is now around like 2011, 2012, yeah. started teaching just running courses. Love it. And that was really helpful and got some feedback and it was a nice kind of side hustle doing yeah. some teaching with that. And, and then, filling that like, yes. you feel like clearly filling that passion, right? Yes. That love for what you do. And then I, I continued to be frustrated by not being able to see the po patient population that I wanted. Yeah. And because I, of the environment you were in at the time. Yes. Yeah. 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 And even in the environment. I, I don't mean like that the people weren't supportive. I just mean yeah. the, the busyness of it was right. probably, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people coming in. Yeah. So we have to handle everyone coming in the door. Yeah. And I, you know, I felt like, uh, why aren't these runners seeking me out a little bit more? Yeah. <laughs> thinking I'm, I'm this really hot good stuff. at this, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. But I, I started wondering why. And then, so that's when I was like, oh, if I could just do gait analysis at a higher level, yeah. like I had when I was at University of Delaware, that would be awesome. And then you could show them. Yes. Yeah. So I, I kind of like knew what I was, but I wanted to show them. So then that's when in 2016 started working on developing a 3D motion analysis system. Yeah. Because there wasn't anything out there that I would, needed. I, I yeah. didn't have $250,000 for a gate lab right. at the time, but right. I wanted one. I actually remember these discussions with you. You and I talked about Like in this. the clinic, I remember yeah. in the, in the four minutes that we had between patients, yeah. I remember you brainstorming about this and being like, 
I wish there was a way yeah. that I could have the system. I like literally remember watching your wheels turn that I could have the same system we had at the Gate Lab, but in a way that's mobile and accessible for physical therapists. Absolutely. So that it's actually doable because yeah. I can't, number one, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. on their setup, yeah. but I still want to be able to do this. And and then I remember like a follow-up conversation where you're like, I think I'm going to create my own. And I'm like, you're crazy. What do you mean you're going to create your own? <laughs> yeah. It was just like, all right, well, yeah. let's do it Yeah, because it needed it. Yeah. And I knew that the patients would benefit from it. And yeah. it's like, hey, if nothing else, then I have it for me. Yeah. And if other people like it, great. Yeah. But it was it was kind of different from a lot of technology. We developed the systematic approach to like working with runners and evaluating runners. Yeah. And then built technology to support it. So cool. That is the way it should be. It should be. Yeah. Right? Like how do we make this easier but and like, more affordable? To your point earlier, a lot of technology doesn't always it comes back to the research. Like yeah. it has to start with a curious mind. And if the technology is being invented by somebody that doesn't have the questions, yes. like the right questions, then they're not going to produce this, the right technology. Right. An engineer yeah. sitting in a room by themselves is going to yeah. be like, this is a great camera. Right. But and an engineer sitting in the with room it? with like a, like a, like a generalist physical therapist is also not going to have the right question. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, fast forward, we kind of had it, it was working. A couple other people wanted to use it type thing, but then 2019 military kind of got a hold yeah. of it and they, gave us some funding and we developed some algorithms to make it even easier. And we expanded from five categories to 12 categories and we were able to really show great results there. Yeah. Unfortunately, we couldn't publish them because of the population we were working with. Yeah. But we were able to show these really great results that it worked and it made it even easier. Like we had military police officers operating the equipment and getting great results. Wow. With it. So that was really and cool. And so to this, see. the equipment, meaning the 3D Helix the system. The 3D system. Yeah. Yeah. So the, Doug and I are talking about this. Can I talk about that yeah, a little sure. bit? Yeah. So it's the 3D Helix system. It's, uh, we have it in our office. Eric is certified it we're all certified in running gate analysis yeah. eric's done all the courses and has the um has the system um so he may, mainly mans that we put everybody that's getting the 3d analysis on eric's schedule um but it's awesome like the results are so cool and what's cool about it for us is like i was describing it's very um it's it's simply it's simple to put into a clinic like it's a single it's a 3d system on a single plate yeah. am i describing it well on, yeah. a, on a 3d cameras on a single plate and then a tv monitor that essentially puts the image real time up on the screen right in front of them so it's really awesome it is and yeah. you know that's like a big part of it and i love that aspect and that's kind of like my baby yeah. so i love that but i think even something um, really happy with and something we share is like the education aspect of it too. Yeah. We've had over 10,000 people take our courses now, yeah. which has been awesome. Mm -hmm. And we get emails from people all the time like, hey, I took your course and that Monday after I took it, I was immediately using it yeah. and doing it in the clinic. And that's great too, because at the core... You know, we kind of talk about, uh, when we talk about Run DNA, we talk about our mission. Yeah. And our mission is 100 happy, healthy. I love that. Right? We want people to be 100 years old, but happy and healthy when they get there. I love that. And the way that we contribute to that. It's is, so cute. When you first said to me 100 happy, healthy yeah. earlier before the cameras were on, I actually thought you were thinking 100%. No. Not 100, but I love that too. 100 years old. 100 years old. Yeah. I love it. I'm going to go for a run on my 100th birthday. I love it. That's my goal. I want to go with you. Let's go. Can we go? Let's go for okay. a run. Yeah. Are we going to be 100 in the same year? I don't think so. Uh, close. Shit, I'm going to be 110 yeah. when you're or something like that. <laughs> no, no. No. Yeah. No. Oh, well. We'll I go. Better on your 100th birthday, my, I'll okay, go for a okay, run with good. you. On my 100th birthday, Perfect. you come for a that run with me. That sounds good. That That'll be good. great. So, <laughs> uh, but it's like, you know, our the way that we contribute to 100 Happy Healthy yeah. is that we analyze movement mm -hmm. to promote healthy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Because there's so essential movements. Like uh, the reason we started with running is because I think running would be this magic pill that if you took all the benefits of running and it would cure cardiovascular disease right. and depression and diabetes, you know, it would be great, yeah. but the FDA would never approve it because right. there's such a risk of injury. Sure. 
So, so if you can minimize the risk of injury, exactly. then you're going to allow people. I love it. Plus, it is. It Running makes people happy. It I does. Mean, it just does. Runner's like, high. You can't, uh, yeah, you can't go to a running event and not see a lot of happy. Now, they might be tired. Yeah. They might be a little beat up, but they're all happy because they're doing something good for themselves. Oh, yeah. yeah. Start line of any race, people are like, oh, I made it. Like, they're, yeah. how was your training? Oh, what are you using? What sh- oh, you like those shoes? They're just happy. Happy. Exactly. I yeah. know. I love it. Um, so that's awesome. So Doug mentioned the name of his running, com- his, um, continuing education company is run DNA. Yeah. And, um, and as he said, the, the programs are amazing. Uh, actually what I wanted to tell you, even one of my patients, um, saw Doug recently for a gait analysis and, um, even the patients come out better educated from these gait analysis. Like I love the way you, in your certification programs, the way you have the descriptors, the, the, yeah. um, the, the, categories Categories, as you put them of deficits and it's really swallowable it's really like easy for patients and therapists to understand and and relay and come up with a plan of attack because patients will come back from these analyses and um like my guy that you just saw recently was like oh my god i'm I'm, apparently my glutes are asleep you know like i'm a glute amnesiac you know and i'm like yep and and it's cute what's even cooler is like i almost knew that he'd go to you yeah and you would say that based on his movement yeah because i analyzed differently and it matched up and it totally matched up yeah and um and so it's really fun to see that not only that correlation between like two different methods of movement analysis, yeah. but also just re-emphasizing it's, it also gives him another avenue of how to, um, improve his movement. Exactly. Like I can help him with, you know, the supportive exercises and supplemental exercise and yeah. different, like, I love how he, he was like, Doug said, check my midfoot. And I'm like on it, you know, yep. like we can collaborate that way, but also, um, having a whole nother way to support him in his own strategies for moving better. It's synergistic, better. right? Yes. It's not competing. It's mm. it's uh, let's work together of it because yeah. that was a big thing. I'm a gate guy. I yeah. love gate. Yeah. But our courses, we really made sure we talk about this uh, unique runner injury profile. And we talk about all the factors that contribute to running injuries. Cool. It's not just the gait. The gait yeah. is a really important part of it. And we focus on it because a lot of people don't look at gait. Yeah. They don't feel confident looking at gait. That's it. And I, that's what we've tried to make that aspect simpler. Yeah. But there's also the elements of we need to look at movement. Yeah. We need to look at these things and they're synergistic. And we need to be because improving mobility and strength doesn't yeah. change form. Right. And improving Form, form without doesn't change mobility and strength. 100%. So we have to be doing both, yeah. which is so important. And it's why it's like, so I, I love when we get to collaborate on patients. Yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It is fun. That's cool. So, um, well, we were talking earlier about maybe some pursues, some, some, some new pursuits of yours in, in the area of using gait analysis to help a hundred happy, healthy people. Yes. Yeah, with walking. Yeah. Yeah, we're going... I, I'm totally nerdy about... I'm I love a it. running nerd yeah. by profession, but I, I'm just changing that. I think I should just be a gate nerd because... Yeah. It's, you it's could just be a nerd. Just nerd. I'm just, yeah. A nerd is, is very Don't accurate. limit yourself. No, nope, I'm just a nerd about everything here. That's yeah, a pretty fair, accurate yeah. description. But I, I'm i loving the walking stuff here, yeah. too. We're releasing uh, a really cool new protocol. We, we do analyze walking already. Yeah. But the way that we have a, a guidance, right? Yeah. What we do, we kind of use... Uh, our courses, our technology, we say we have a guide mentality. So we're like a fishing guide. Smart. So we take you, like the fishing guide is the one that's tying the lures, doing that thing and kind of like, hey, cash it over there. Yeah. But you're catching the fish, right? Yeah. And we want to be, we want to make it easy for you to get great results. So yeah. we, we want to be a guide like that. And that's like what we do with our courses and with our technology is like, hey, we want you to be an expert fisherman. And we're going to teach you some things along the way. And then you're going to go in and you're going to cash and you're going to do the work and you're going to get the results. And yeah. like that fish is, you know, you drug it in, you get to eat it and kill it kind right. of thing. Right. But you're, yeah. I know you and I were talking about this before too, how like really what you're doing with your courses, which is, which is priceless to therapists really is it's almost like an apprenticeship program. Yeah. Like to me, you're sharing 
your all of your nerdiness that you've accumulated over the years from even from that first high school experience where you oh, started yeah. delving into the research then all of those years of experience and those clinical patterns that you've seen, you're now just openly sharing with people. Oh, it's a wide open book. Yeah. Right? Like if anyone wants mm -hmm. to treat like, you know, like we've seen and now a lot of other people are doing successfully yeah. too, it's like, here it is. I know. I, it's I'm cool. I'm open book with that stuff. I know you are. It's it, cool. And it's that's one of the reasons we've also always jived is that yeah. like you're, you're in it for the right reasons. You just want people to get better. Yeah. And, and I think you and I both came to this realization that like, we can help more patients by helping more therapists do better. Yeah. Right? Well, I think we had this conversation yeah. one time in the clinic too. It's so funny because you were there for all these like formative years while all this stuff was coming together yeah. here. Yeah. That I said, all right, I think we did the math one time. Yeah. All right, how many patients? I'm helping like 400 different patients a year. And if I have a 40-year career, I'm going to help 1,600 patients. Right. Like, oh, that's really good. Yeah. Like, I helped 1,600 people. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, well, now if I teach right. 10,000 clinicians. Right. And each of them, each of them is treating 1600 people. And maybe it's not that I'm the entire influence of why they're getting results, no. but if it helps a majority of their patients, yeah. like that's a lot more people. Right. And that's the career goal yeah. that we do. And it's it's the same, like, it's funny. So our we just did our quarterly meeting for Run DNA. And yeah. our metric that we look at is how many gait analysis were done. Cool. And so when one of our users does a 3D gait analysis, we can track and say, like, oh, they send it to the to the app, the web-based app there. So a gait analysis was done. That was cool. That's and awesome. The cool thing was that quarter one of 2023 – was a certain amount. And then in quarter one of 2024, it was almost 3X. Let's go. And I was like, this is great. Like so, so cool. many more people are getting gait analysis. And that's all what we're about, right? Because yeah. we don't make a dime when they do no. a gait analysis. But that's our most important metric because yeah. like we want to make sure people have everything that they need to do gait analysis. It's right? awesome. Which is fun. But, and I know, I like going back to the walking thing, when yeah. you first started telling me, uh, that you were going to start looking into more of the walk in, in yeah. instruction, like education on walking analysis. I was like, this is huge because I have so many patients that I know things will be revealed in their walking analysis that, you know, I may not pick up. I may not pick up with my eyes. We were you talking know? about yeah. my example. Yeah, like, I didn't know if you wanted to share it. Yeah, I was uh, happy to share it. Cause, yeah. So uh, if uh, I'm not the most active on social media, but some people that follow me on social media, I shared a bit of an injury journey that I had recently where I partially tore my patellar tendon. Right. And I had to take some time off and that that's a whole nother story. But <laughs> anyway, uh, now I'm back running yeah. and I perceive that I'm doing well. Yeah. And we, I was teaching one of the clinicians in my and clinic. Wait, I yeah. should just say, he perceives he's doing well and he's a pretty critical eye. Like even, <laughs> like really, yes. I mean, even some people can't analyze themselves well, but I've, Known Doug a long time, and I know you're pretty good at First like to admit picking up. Yeah, not doing like well. he'll be like, yeah. "Oh, I'm a little bit off on my heel strike or whatever." Like I've definitely heard you say those things. So that's pretty cool that you didn't pick up anything Did, uh, it was on like, your initial screen. I feel like my running's going well, and I've done running data, and this is interesting with the walking and running part too, because they're different movement patterns. Yeah. Right. So my running, I've checked as I've gone along, and it's been it's been and good. it's been good. You right. felt good, yes. and when There's you do the three D helix, it's still pretty good. Yes, okay. There's still a little right left difference, but like the the important metrics are there. Yeah. So I was teaching the clinician how to use the walking protocol, and I noticed a difference in my hip position on my involved side versus my involved side, and then I pulled up a graph of the hip and the knee together. And what I noticed is I was avoiding straightening my knee out fully on the right side. On the swing? And I was uh, at initial contact. Okay. So at initial contact, I had an even step length, uh -huh. which was good. And all those metrics, if I just looked at it that way, I'd be like, oh, you're nice and even. Good job. Right. But then I looked a little deeper and I was like, oh, like, why is my hip more on that side? And to keep my step length symmetrical, what I'm doing is I'm increasing my hip flexion because I don't want to go into as much knee extension. Interesting. So I I was like, oh, wow, I guess I really am. And then I just kind of went and I tried it and I extended my knee fully. And I was like, oh, I have a little bit of pain there. Interesting. So yeah. the body is great at compensating. Yeah. And But it doesn't 
do a good job of sending an email to you it to tell do- you it's compensating. I was just going to say that. It does. And it's like, I got this. I'm just going to handle this. Yeah. But then that manifests into deficit somewhere else. And that's important because right? when we were being chased by lions and we yeah. needed to run away, we needed to we compensate needed to just quickly. just do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't need to send a memo. That's but right. It's now knowing when it's not necessary to compensate, it doesn't change back. It's short-sighted. Yeah. It's like, hey, this works. Yeah. So it's true. all of a sudden, if I start getting, I've had a little back pain recently and we've done a lot of walking recently Yeah, and I, a little right-sided low back pain. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm going into more hip flexion. You're I'm using my hip flexors. getting a little more flexors. pelvic torsion. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it's interesting just how that informs it. I mean, I, I view this and I'm biased. I'll, I'll admit it there, right? <laughs> we're all but biased. We're all biased. But I admit, I, I think having an ability to measure gait is like having a goniometer in a clinic. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Well, it's even better than that because it's yeah. a real light. It's a real time. It's in real time. That's what I was telling. I was telling Doug earlier that I had a patient today that I, um, he's going to do his gait analysis with Eric, but I, yeah. I was, I had, I squeezed him in a session. It was a 45 minute eval. He's running broad street. So oh, nice. he's, Coming yeah, but he's, but he told me three times before I even weeks. started as a val, like, I'm not a runner. I'm not a runner. You know, he's a squash player. He's very active, but like, he's like, I'm not a runner. And he was like, I brought my shoes though for you to look at them. And I said, look, I'm going to look at your shoes, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to look at baseline foundational mobility and stability patterns on you. Yeah. But I want you to, I don't want to waste your time getting on the treadmill today because not waste your time, but I want to make the most of your time and money, monetary investment and put you on the 3D Helix system with Eric because yeah. he's going to see more at a, at a, at a more specific level at every joint than what I can do with my eyes. Right. Quicker and easier. Quicker and easier too. and more effective. Yeah. 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 So, um, so I was, I actually told him, remember how, this is another cool story that I should share with you. After my ACL reconstruction, um, Doug helped me with my rehab and we did some gait analysis when I first started running again, we're going to do a follow up so yes. you can see how I progressed. But what was really cool, that was early. That was like just after, I mean, I was yeah, just that was cleared like to run. The earliest that it you was could like run. maybe three months right. out. And, um, and uh, I had multiple pairs of shoes in my car because I'm, because. Yeah. Because Active. I'm not, because, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and when we used different shoes for the gait analysis, it changed dramatically. It Remember did, that? It changed a good bit. The a one good, pair so was, much that I threw the one pair out. Yeah. Like I was like, oh my God, this is so bad. I'm never, I don't even want to get confused. I threw them out. Yeah. We have uh, mm-hmm. running stores using our technology now Smart. that are helping people with Choose it there it. because shoes aren't cheap now. I know. So if you're going to spend 150 bucks on a pair of shoes, make sure it's the right pair of shoes. And it probably saves them because people are trying to bring back, because they're expensive, yeah. people are buying them, coming to us, we're saying that's not the right shoe for you. Yeah. And they're trying to take them back. It's just a hassle. Well, they sit there, they throw them out. Yeah. Then but they this, wasted 150 bucks. So this guy, same thing. I was like, look, I was like, bring all of your shoes that you bring that you think you should wear because yeah. I want Eric to look at them all all yeah. for you yeah. and then he can help you choose what shoes to wear yeah so that's cool which is fun it's yeah. I mean for me like not a, that's not everyone's cup of tea but yeah. it's really fun if you're interested in that stuff getting the data and we were talking about developing expertise and curiosity right the only way that you develop the expertise is if you get knowledge of the results yeah if you're Smart. if if you're curious and you're testing but you're not getting the test results, yeah, you don't know how you did on that. That's you don't right. know if if you your can't, work helped. You out. can't recourse or not. No. Smart. So you have to get like if you want to be really good at something, you need to have the tools and technology and whatever is necessary. Maybe like there are things that you can measure. Like I want people doing gait analysis. I don't like Yeah. I know not every clinic's gonna have a three D, even though I think it's like a goniometer. I know. Right? I keep talking about it because yeah. I love it and I like toys and yeah. I like efficient honestly, I like efficient use of time. And I yes. think that's why I'm such a proponent. Yeah, it's but, three minutes. But the to truth get a is you your courses do give a ton of information that make it very um, yeah. manageable for a therapist to analyze gait without the system. Right. We tell you, hey, yeah. with 2D, here's what to do. Yeah. I want people doing gait. Yeah. Right? I can't measure everyone that's taking our courses. Right. Uh, how many gait analysis are being done. We just know how many 3D are done. Cool. But I'm like... Wow. I didn't I w- even think of that when you said that number. Yeah. That's awesome. But now think of all the people that just took the courses. Yeah. Those 10,000 people. Like if they're doing gait analysis, we, kn- we have no way to track. But right. we're making gait analysis prime as part of right. what rehab is for runners there. that's really cool yeah that's i mean that's our goal with it and in your courses um because it's been a while since i took them honestly yeah. but are you st- i remember you have like 
your courses also come with sort of the protocol, right? Yes. Of, yeah. Yeah. So we good. make it so that we want you to apply it right away. Yeah. And then now we've even started like there is an optional app yeah. that you can use for it there. And we made that even cheaper for our education people because we want them to incorporate it. Yeah. I think it's, uh, you know. Like through I, the Run DNA app. Through the Run mean? DNA app. That's awesome. Yeah. Because – it just makes it easier where you have these programs and we have our programs, yeah. but you can make your own programs too. But if the, we literally make it so that the patient gets an email every day saying, it's cool. Here's your program. Here's the video. I've used the app. It's this. awesome. <laughs> Honestly, the app is awesome because it, it does more. It also, it gives you a way to get real time feedback from yes. your page. It's just like you said, yeah. if you, if you're not getting the knowledge, if you're not seeing how you did, you can't recourse right and so in through the app are they having pain are they not the app gives you real-time information yeah. on on their response to treatment as well even when you're not with them which is so cool yeah yeah, yeah. and it has the all the exercises everything like built all the, so each like correct me if i'm yeah describing this incorrectly but but each exercise um so i'm not sorry each um like deficit criteria yeah what do you call it um, uh, gate category gate category yes yeah each gate category has a basically a series of an exercise program that's a, that helps with it right right yeah so when we say hey somebody's a overstride or knee drive right. one of the 12 categories there's a okay here's how to warm up here's drills like yeah. we literally break it down of if you see this on the treadmill take them off do these two drills yeah. give them this cue yeah get them back on the treadmill Brilliant. then they do this gate retraining program for the next four weeks yeah and it's you just hit a button for that you literally just like shrink wrapped yeah all of your years of experience and made it very manageable for therapists to apply. Because I remember it be, even when I opened my practice Omega Project that we were just spending a lot of time after gate analysis yeah. putting these together. And I was like, ah, I know we're charging a good bit for these, but I don't have time to yeah. sit here for 45 minutes and yeah. make up a program. That's brilliant. I love that you do that. It makes a huge difference because when they, and it's also a better patient experience because yeah. when they leave, they know everything they're supposed to do. Right. They don't have to wait a couple days for us to send it. Yeah. Or th it's just like, well, they're and done. Well, they're staying in, like, they're also, their compliance has to go way up because oh, yeah. they're, like, I know the other um, patient of mine that moved to New York and yeah. she needed you and, yep. and and you managed her virtually. Yes. And, um, and that was awesome. She like, did great. Yeah, she did great. And she, I know that she was nervous about like her her ability to do that virtually, but the yeah. app kept her kept her in line. She rocked it. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah she yeah. is. Yeah, so, she did a great job. Um, yeah, that's cool. What about there was something else we were talking about um, before the you were talking about um, clinical expertise. Oh, the test for test. Do you want to go there? Yeah, yeah. we can go there. Right, let's, let's go. go there. I, I so I was just thinking I, I uh, to give. JJ, the kudos that she deserves. Like, JJ is just at the top of the field, does a great job. She is just like such an expert on this. And you really, like, I just feel lucky to witness some of that development where yeah. where you were there it wasn't legal to needle in Delo or it wasn't illegal but it wasn't legal <laughs> it wasn't or clearly defined it wasn't in clearly the defined <laughs> um, and JJ like advocated for that but also yeah. was just like being an advocate but developing clinical expertise and doing those Thanks. things and and I think about that, and I was kind of thinking, wow, and, and your practice, Primal, is just a shining example mm -hmm. of, like, what we should aspire to have for our, our practices. And I just started thinking, like, what, you know, how does JJ do that? Like, well, how does she develop that level of expertise? And, you know, and, and what are some of the similarities? Because we've taken similar but different paths. And yeah. I think we always talk about test retest. Yeah. And I think if you're not doing test for test, you have to do that. Right. That would bring up the entire profession. Right. But I do think that there's a missing step that you've done and that I tried to do as well. And I think it's really important. And we talked about this even when we talked about research is you have to write it down, actually. Yeah. Like you actually have, to, and there's different ways to do that. So, and what I mean by you have to write it down is there, this is more on the business side, but I, you know, have some people that work with me in my company and we started talking about things and we, we started realizing that you never really fully understand something until you write it down. Yeah. Because when you write it down, you start to see the holes and you start to feel like, oh, and I think 
something as complex as treating a patient. Right. There are so many influences and factors that go into it. And if you want to develop true expertise, you need to take those factors and see which are the most important. And can you simplify it and break it down and break it down and break it down even more to find a way that you can simply write it down? And this is something that I wish somebody had encouraged me to do earlier on in my career, that when I'm working with patients, understanding what is my methodology and like, why did that work? Yeah. And actually write it down and do a little journaling and do a little self-discovery. I love that. And say like, hey, when I see this, like it, it could be as simple as it. Here's, here's a practical example, okay? Yeah. You treat somebody with low back pain and you find that when they have pain that points at the PSIS, you find that most of the time they're going to have uh, hip flexor issues that if you don't address the hip flexor, the pain will never truly go away. Right. Write it down and then start to take it to the next level and understand those patterns and mm-hmm. the way that you got there. And then when that doesn't work for somebody, go back to that and be like, well, it didn't work for this person right. because of what? Why? Exactly. And that, the way that you and I have kind of done this is starting to do teaching. Yeah. I was just thinking that. So that's <clears throat> the first step of of writing it down. It's teaching somebody else's material even. Yeah. Like just get used to teaching and understanding things written down and yeah. conveying it to somebody else. It's funny because when I um, mentored some uh, colleagues in the past, before I even opened Primal, yeah. I was teaching dry needling and I had some colleagues who were interested in, they had just started dry needling. And they were like, I don't know, I just don't feel very confident. And I was like, you want to get confident, you teach it. Yeah. Like when you stand in front of people and you have to then teach them, it's just like you said, the holes yeah. will come out. And yeah, I mean, honestly, when I first started teaching... I would um, even, like, I would spend time in the hotel room, just like you're saying, writing Writing down down. all of my thoughts, all of my, um, and and it had to make, it had to be systematic and it had to be organized and it had to be packaged in a way that was swallowable. Yeah. So you're 100% right. And it doesn't, like, you can start teaching your patients. Yeah. You can start teaching your colleagues. Yes. You don't have to go teach for a big company or start your own courses or things. Or you could even just, I like how you're saying, write it down. Like you could even just make it your own resource. Yeah. If you had a manual for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Let's say, uh, hopefully this doesn't happen to you. Somebody has a traumatic brain injury. They're like, I need to start over. Right. Like, well, let me read this and start over. Right. And if you had that manual, I think people's level of expertise would significantly improve. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, you're right. Write it down, put it in a, yeah. put it, just put it in a package. I always wish I had done this coming out of school and maybe this is a new app idea, a new business idea for somebody that wants to go out there and develop yeah. it. But like, you know, my clinical journal or something, but there's even exercises Smart. that I used to use all the time yeah. and then I completely forget about them yes. and I don't use them for a day, a week, a month, a year, a decade. And then all of a sudden, and then I come back and it's like, why am I not doing this exercise yeah. anymore? Like I should totally, yeah. I was like rolling, right? Yeah. The neurodynamic. I love rolling. rolling. I love rolling. And I, there was like a period of two or three years that I didn't have anybody roll, but there yeah. was before that I had everybody roll. Yeah. And I would love to just be able to go back and flip through that manual. You're right. And just say like, oh, why was that? Or why did I think that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now I need to update that one because right. that is like, I need a version 2024. It's true. Yeah. It's funny because my rolling progression now is like Turkish get up. Yeah. Um, Regressions. Yeah, when I you know took the I mean? foundations course, yeah. I was like, "This is great." Yeah, I, like we That's we did cool. a whole lab on those nice. Turkish get up yeah. ones, and I remember yeah. you and I practicing <laughs> Turkish get ups. <laughs> We were like, which leg goes up? Yeah. We were in the clinic and we were like on that mat yes. right by where we did the notes yes. and we would do the exercises. And yes. it was like, it's yeah. funny back to your, like, um, I think the, cl- the writing things down that taking it to another level of expertise. Yeah. So just to summarize, cause I think we, we are, just to unpack a lot of what you just said just there is, um, if a clinician and we do have a lot of younger clinicians on the podcast, so I'm really glad we're talking about this yeah. or listening to the podcast. Um, if a clinician really wants to be great, Mm -hmm. test retest is critical, Absolutely, but take it a step further and write it down in some way, shape or form, whether that turns into you teaching, you know, maybe you just have, um, 
rounds with your other colleagues. Yeah. Like maybe you have lunch hours with your colleagues in the clinic and you guys discuss. We do this after our meetings um, we, still yeah. because you do. Once you share and even audi- like audibly share what you see, the patterns start to become ingrained. But, but when you really write it down, you can go back to it. Yeah. Um, the other – for those st- – students that are listening Mm -hmm. the other thing that you just said that i feel like i feel compelled to share is when i was in pt school i don't know if i ever told you this but i i would get lost in the in the book in like the words a lot Mm. so the way i studied was literally to write down i I outlined every chapter really and then i would outline my outline and then i would outline my outline and then i would outline my outline so it was like and then all of a sudden it was like shrink wrapping just like your run dna courses yeah but like all of a sudden this very complex thing made sense on a fundamental level right summarize it in three points yeah yeah so um for those of you that are still in school yeah it's a really great way to study too. And get started. It. Make it a habit yeah. type thing. And because it's even easier now, right? You can just start a note on your phone. Yeah. And whatever like whatever medium makes you most excited to do it that way. Yeah. And most um like regular. Yes. What's consistent. Consistent. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's I mean, that's a huge part of it too. I think a lot of times people feel like they have to do things certain ways because right. other people do. Right. I've learned over the years, I've had so many different ways of doing things and systems. Yeah. And I the ones that work the best are the ones that I'm most excited about. Like that's right. I always I would love to be somebody that carries a notebook around and yeah. like take notes and no. things like that. No, I carry a phone and keys. I want to get like as yeah. minimal stuff in my pocket right. as possible. Yeah. And so for me, I just keep a bunch of notes. I do too. Yeah. On yeah. My phone. I just use my great. phone and I have a couple pinned at the top. Yeah. And then I've, I've like a thousand below that, but yeah. Yeah. It works. And I go back and review them yes. every once in a while and be like, oh, all right, I should do something with this note or eh, let's delete that one. That one wasn't so good. Yes. Yeah. You're right. I know. It's awesome. It's like you have to have a way to capture it pretty quickly in the moment, too. Yeah. It's, it doesn't have to be sophisticated, but I, I think we should all strive for expertise. I think I, I don't... I, I would be curious. Please leave me a comment in the show notes. <laughs> if, if not, but I'd be curious if anyone like doesn't want to be an expert at what they do. I feel like the people listening to this podcast do. I, I would 100%. But I 100% that. unfortunately feel like not everyone is there. Yeah. But I And that's why I, I also think part of the limitation with those that are not there are that maybe they have, they feel it's overwhelming to... Mm-hmm to learn like yeah. some of the courses, some of the, some of the learning opportunities are overwhelming. And I think, so finding the ones that are like yours that are so well put together and, yeah. so, and, and supportive even after, like, you know how it is. A lot of courses give you a lot of great content yeah. and then you leave the weekend like, Oh God, I don't know what to do with this. Yes. But like your courses are something that they get a lot of, content and a lot of understanding and foundational knowledge but then you also have this support that trickles afterward that they can implement it yeah which is huge so my advice to the people that aren't listening that don't (laughs) aren't pursuing being (laughs) experts right now is to find courses that um, are are more manageable and right. give them support afterwards. So. And same with foundations course. I mean, we, my whole clinic went to that, and it, it was like everyone was just having fun after uh, and immediately applying it there. And that's the type you. of education that you should really look for because that that does make a a big difference. Yeah. And so on the way up, on the same kind of point. Hopefully, we're not beating it to death here. But yeah. I was listening to this book, and it was talking. It gave an example of Warren Buffett I and about him. wealth generation. Yeah. And it was really interesting, and I think the same thing for clinical expertise. What they're doing, what Warren Buffett is doing, is looking to add marginal wealth over time that creates very big wealth. So for people that are worried about, can I be an expert or can I do this? It doesn't have to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Like you write one or two of these things down. If you write down one a month, one a quarter, like... Well, all right, you developed that. Well, now you can build the next one, and then you've got this other one yeah. that you can go forward with. No, I'm glad you said that because actually as physical therapists, I think what we try to promote in patients mm-hmm. is 
what my husband, the finance guy, calls aggregation of marginal gains. Yeah. Right? Like we want patients to just do a fancy little bit term. of the right things, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, finance guys yeah. are fancy. But but that's what we're trying to gain in physical, in patients yeah. as physical therapists is like, do a li- like we're like, look, do this stretch consistently yeah. for 90 seconds a day, you know, yeah. Not, nothing big and it'll pay out. And it's the same thing with learning. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's good. And same thing with running. It's anything, right? Yeah. I mean, I just came off like this winter. I did, I, I gave myself like an off season. Yeah. Where I was just like, I'm just going to run slow yeah. for the entire winter. And I'm going to run on the treadmill. I'm not going to run outside. I'm going to make it easy. Amazing. Like, and now I'm like kind of, I'm gearing up for this like challenge I'm doing. Okay. And it's amazing how having that consistency and that base and that foundation yeah. is just making it so much easier. And that's the same Great. thing with whatever you're doing. Everything. Yeah. I know. And so like you're saying, back to that, we are beating a dead horse, but I think it's not a dead horse. It would it would make the horse alive if yes. you, um, yeah, just write down one thing a month. I love that. Right. Um, one other thought with that, my 16-year-old just started reading the book, um, Ian just started reading the book, Atomic Habits. Oh, and it was so cute. love Atomic Habits. Yeah, book. and I haven't read it. I'm Do you get read it the him. newsletter from him? No. Oh, you have to get the 321. Okay. Um, he, it's like, it's almost, I don't know, they're, uh, growing up, like, uh, not super religious now, but like growing up, I had this, uh, we went to this church at University of Delaware and it felt like the priest would just like follow you around for a week and tell you what you needed to hear. Oh my like, gosh. He was great. It was like, a good thing. It, he was yeah. just okay. phenomenal. You're okay. like, wow, how did you know I needed to hear that right, right now? That's so funny. But the James Clear, his newsletter is just amazing because he does like, I forget that it's like three things to think about, two quotes and one question. Oh, I love that. And it's every Thursday and it comes out. That's great. And it's great. Okay. And it's very, it's, there's always, I'll do it. one of those things is always like timely information. It feels That's like cool. he's kind of like You're following like, me around. How did he know? How did he know? Is he that? in my iPhone too? Yes. Um, but Sorry to, no, to go for a I love that because I'm going to sign up for it. Yeah. And that's, my point was like, there was, I was so proud. I was listening to him and I'm like, uh, he's, he's telling me first thing this morning, he's like, mom, I was reading last night. He's like, the, the book's great. It's like, you know, if you get 1% better yeah. every day, you know, 1% better every week, whatever it is. Um, and you'll be so much better later. And, and it's, it's all so about awesome. process, right? Yeah. So because that book, that book was great for me, but it also shook me a little bit. Yeah. I have this habit where like January 1st is one of my favorite days of the year. Okay. I sit down for eight hours and write goals. I love that. I just spend the whole day and I like deep dive into goals. I'm sure you do. I do like a pre-mortem. I say like, why am I going to fail at this goal? Yeah. I think about strategies and obstacles and That's I write awesome. out the whole thing. But the Atomic Habits is kind of like, don't write goals. Oh, really? It's not don't write goals. Like, I can't you can still to have it. goals to make sure that you're going that way. <clears throat> but it says... Oh. Not as important as the goal is, is the, process the process of how you to, get there. That is, a, I could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you miss the goal, but you're still better, yeah. fine. Great. Right. You're moving in the right direction. Yeah. And it's the same thing. We just, if you're right, the process of writing things down in is the gonna clinic. Is going to accumulate. Is going to accumulate so cool. and you'll get better over time. So that's that's on my must read recommended it. list. I'm surprised you, you do a lot of stuff. I'm surprised you haven't read that book. I haven't, but yeah. I will. I love it. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool. great one for you. Doug, I think we're out of time. But, yeah. Um, we could, Doug and I could talk for literally hours. So we, we'll we probably have do. him back on. <laughs> I know. Um, so if you want to know more about Doug's courses, which I would strongly suggest, um, go to, is it rundna.com? Yes. Yeah. yeah um, follow them on Instagram as well, rundna. Uh, uh, rundna system. Rundna system. That's right. Um, well, I post you guys all the time. Yeah. So you could just keep following me on Instagram and check out when I post them. Um, and yeah, if you have any more questions on Doug's team and the amazing work they do, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to him, um, as well. And look forward to catching you soon. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Doug. Bye.